we have Darren Gobb who just dinged in, as you can hear. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a give a little bit of background on Darren. And then we'll have him on. Let me pop over to his profile page here. Darren Gobb is a proud fourth-generation Montanan who enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1991 and was assigned to the United States Army's Presidential Honor Guard in Fort Myers, Virginia, member of the Montana Army National Guard. And that we'll bring him on. We'll bring Darren on a little bit early here. And he is also the co-founder of Restore Liberty. And you can find out that uh, you can find that website by going to Restore hyphen liberty dot com and uh, Lieutenant Colonel Darren Gobb has been I believe Lieutenant Colonel he's been on the uh, broadcast many times and uh, we're always glad to have him on let's pop back over to the screen here where he is or should be and we'll welcome him officially to the show let me pop this up here we've got everything in place let me see if it works there we go Darren let me take you off mute Darren thanks so much for being here today on the broadcast man appreciate it always good to see you Hey, good morning, Jim. Good to be here again. Good to see you, too. Yeah, it is. Uh, and I have uh, I did Monday, I went through all the introductions and everything and kind of did a background. And, uh, you know, you can certainly em embellish on that some more if you'd like, or, or, or you know, um, if I didn't cover it fully, please uh, go ahead and uh, you can finish off what I didn't do. But uh, generally, this uh, this is going to be a 12-minute thing where from, you know, this point on, we'll just say, hey, Darren Goff from Store Liberty, our man on the scene, ma'am, and you hit the ground running. So um, I know you can do it. I know you've been on a lot of great shows, man. You've been on um, Fox News several times. You've been on Steve Bannon's show a lot of times. Are you still doing all those things, Darren? You still doing those gigs? Uh, if they'll have me, I'm kind of a small fish in a big pond, so I do what I can. <laughs> We're all our brother. <laughs> okay, so if you can tell us, a thing, first of all, thanks for being here. It's great to, to have you here as our first spot here on a Thursday. Uh, give us, if you can, look, tell us a little bit about Restore Liberty and uh, let us know what do you got going on, what news is on your radar, and uh, what is uh, what do you want to get across to the folks? Well, yeah, it's uh, the challenge of being a person who's mostly been focused on global strategy lately for the last couple of years is is, uh, is bringing it down to making it real for people at local levels, whether that be state, city, county, whatever, whatever that is. And I think in Montana, that, that's pretty easy to do. But uh, with Restore Liberty, of course, one of our focuses is always going to be local level support to people across the country, such as teacher boards, sheriffs, judges, um, and clerk and recorder races because that those matter a, a lot. So we're, we're getting, getting involved in those because uh, we've got a lot of folks who work in those arenas that are great, but we have a lot of folks in those arenas that are working against the people, and uh, they need to be exposed and removed very quickly uh, before this country keeps going down this path too far. Uh, so that's really Restore Liberty's effort is continuing to build the team, continuing to show uh, the kinds of people that we endorse and we support and build the trust across the country and all the states that we're in, which is nearly 40 now, uh, as we uh, really, I guess, just uh, in many cases, we're still in our infancy stage compared to many. And uh, but I think we're going to we're going to be there for a long time. And that's the plan. You find it kind of ironic that the uh, the current administration um, and the three letter agencies that surround them demonize these grassroots groups um, and it, it, you, you pretty much just pick one. Yet they are the ones that are doing the most to create these groups. You look, I mean, they're making it easy to create. You look at the FBI and they're just open, just their open criminality and just flaunt the law and the Constitution means nothing. They're letting criminals out of jail. I mean, they, why, why, I mean, why should we all follow these laws when none of them do, Darren? I mean, that's got to be. That's a frustrating thing, and, you know, they're making it easy. Like I said, their actions are making it easy for groups of people to come together and go, listen, we're not going to put up with this anymore. Your group, you know, Tactical Civics, and there's, there's a whole bunch of different groups out there, um, right, um, um, people's rights, and, you know, some of these some of these groups, like you know, like yours in a way. They're causing these, don't you think, Derek? I mean, uh, Darren, aren't they making it easy for these groups to get going with their actions? Oh, absolutely. In fact, I... I don't know why necessarily. I think maybe you could make a guess, but I started this whole thing well before the 2020 elections and you know, seeing what was coming. It was pretty plain at that point, you know, the, the trajectory of this nation. And as a historian, I think it's easier to see these things because we know that the 
tendency of nations and peoples is to creep towards mm -hmm. tyranny and power and centralization of control, and it always will be that way. So we and we have to remember that as a, as a people. But certainly, I, there's no surprise in my mind at all that groups like crazy are popping up and and i've run into hundreds of them across the country i'm part of a few of them that are actually global from uh world forums of made up of all kinds of people to veterans coalitions and you name it uh, i want to be involved in, in in some way in a lot of those that are good but in some cases there's also a a weaponizing of the patriot movement in a negative way too because there are groups out there that are grifting on others, making money off of others, and and spending it on the usual things that are not effective towards what they claim to be. Yeah, some of those groups might come as a surprise to folks. And uh, just because you have the word patriot in your name or America first in your name doesn't mean that you care about either of those two. That's right. So that's part of the problem. But the FBI, the three-letter agencies, the corrupt Department of Justice, and let's bring it on down to Montana where we have one of the worst Supreme Courts in the entire country. That's right. Uh, these organizations and entities and government violate our trust and then complain about lo losing trust of the people. Well, they've earned it. They've earned that lost trust. Why is the Montana Supreme Court the most overturned Supreme Court in the country? I mean, look at what they just did. They overturned or put on hold a bunch of election laws that are just basic common sense measures like ballot harvesting and uh, same day registrations, things that, Make absolute perfect sense because only citizens should be able but, to. But vote. Karen, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I was reading that this morning, and it says, "Okay, here's the way I read it. It's the Supreme Court's opinion. It's just their opinion. Supreme Court. We have lawmakers. They're not lawmakers. The lawmakers spoke. The lawmakers in Montana passed the law. The Supreme Court just issues opinions." How long before the gov how long before Gianforte says that's great we appreciate your opinion but we're following the lawmakers because they're the ones that are closest to the folks thanks have a good day we'll buy you a cup of coffee on the way out why don't we just do that they don't have a police force supreme court doesn't have a supreme court militia that's going to take down people that, that disobey them why don't we just flip on the bird and say you're crooks we're no longer listening to you i i know it sounds like a simple simple uh, solution but that's what i'd do if i was governor yeah, there's an argument to be made there about what needs to be done, stepping forward in courage and just saying, yeah, sorry, these are very much constitutional laws, and that's really all that matters. You're not the sole arbiter and decider and legislating from the bench. They can't do that, but they've been doing it for years, and they'll continue to do it for years. And just look up, look who's lined up behind each of these current sitting Supreme Court justices, from the specifically from the world of, of lawyers and other justice arenas. We know that they're corrupt. We know that they are uh, unconstitutionally minded. They don't care about any of that. They don't care about what our lawmakers say. Right now, they're following a very clear agenda, which is to derail what we, the people, want to see happen in Montana. Sure, absolutely. Maybe it's time to say, you know what, court? You're only supposed to oversee other courts. You're not supposed to make law from the bench, which you've been doing for a very long time. And it's time to stop, and maybe we should just ignore you. Well, it is their opinion. It says it right in there. It's their opinion. I mean, it's an opinion, right. right? I mean, when you go to a doctor, you get a doctor's opinion. You don't have to follow it. You go to another doctor, they give you a different opinion. I know that's not the same situation, but an opinion doesn't mean it has to be followed. It means it's a recommendation. I, I just don't understand why we don't just, it seems like such a simple procedure. Okay, thanks for your opinion, but we're not going to follow that. We're going to follow what the lawmakers put in place. What are they? What's what's they? What are they going to do, Darren? Are they going to call Austin Knutson? You think he's going to assemble the state police to, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, uh, um, kick down doors of legislators? Not going to happen. Not going to happen. All I got to say is, if you live by the Supreme Court, you die by the Supreme Court. And so the one time it rules for you, for the Constitution and for the people, the next time it'll do it against. And so we've got to be very careful about putting. Investing all of our power, frankly, into one arm of the government where the, they're supposed to be equal branch, then the lawmakers and the governor's office and the executive. And, and right now, no matter what the governor does, no matter what the legislative branch does, it all seems to file into a Montana Supreme Court that is infested with a severe cancer that can cause the death of a state if we're not careful absolutely absolutely so what is on your what's on your plate there at 
Restore Liberty. Uh, I know that you're always active in doing things. Um, I'm probably just, I imagine, a per, per, portion of your of your activity is just for certain recruiting new members and, and kind of getting the word. I say recruit new members, trying to build organizations, grassroots organizations in different states. Um, but do you guys have a uh, do you have a legislative? Do you have anything that you're backing legislatively? Uh, are you going to be doing endorsements? I think you last time did endorsements, candidate endorsements. You're still you still co- compiling information to start to put out a an endor- a candidate endorsement uh, issue or uh, at least uh, on your website update that type of thing. Yeah, we have candidate endorsements on our website, um, and we have to we have a questionnaire that we'll send to those candidates who want our endorsement or who we think really specifically deserve our endorsement because it's a pretty high bar to reach. So we're continuing to push on that. Uh, legislatively, of course, we work in concert with other organizations towards medical freedom and specifically also towards educational freedom, putting parents between government and their kids rather than having government be between parents and their kids the other way around. And so we're working pretty heavily on that. But most of what we're doing really is is building the team on a national scale um, and then a team of teams for each state director to have theirs to support them as well and get out and support legislation. Now, there's a lot of that being written already across the country, so we don't necessarily have to write it. We just provide a lot of the people that get behind it. Now, the other thing we're doing, uh, myself and my co-founder specifically, are really focused on bringing to light what is going on on a global scale so we can make it a reality to people here in your living room, I guess you could say. And that we're taking a look at why Turkey has aligned itself with China through, you know, the Shanghai Cooperative Organization and and also being duly aligned to to NATO and what that means to uh, currency and why the petrodollar is at risk right now, which could really really change the American economy. And and it's not all in bad ways, but there 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 are some goodness to that as well. But if you're looking at the cost of the gas and the electricity coming into your house, then you should be concerned about what's going on between Turkey and China and Russia and Ukraine and, and looking at, at Europe and why the why their uh, energy costs have skyrocketed, and which which is why you know Putin's got a you know, a lot more in his deck than people think. I think he's close to losing in Ukraine, but he's nowhere close to losing when it comes to Europe in general. So. Now, that's part of what we have to do with uh, with what we're doing as well, Bring, bringing the global situation home. And I submit to you that that was part of their plan all along, is to make us globally in, interdependent upon other nations, which is what you know their one world order plan is. Is all it's everything under one, you know, one sort of one government, one religion, everything like that. Yeah. And and when that. What you're seeing is that you're seeing the damage that can do that. See, we we've outsourced a lot of our stuff. Uh, a lot of everything, a lot of stuff is made in China. Uh, rare earth minerals. Uh, you know, we're dependent upon other countries for some of those type of things. And I think that's all been done by design, Darren. So they can. You know, it's hard to attack America with our with our military and, and of course the armed population. But if they can, if they can cause damage to our our, our allies and those that that we do business with, then they can they can cause damage to us. Is that kind of what you're, kind of what you're saying? That's, that's Maybe you don't agree with that, well, everything I just said, but is that what's happening? They're, they're, har- they're harming our allies, which is eventually going to harm us. Well, yeah, there's, there's a lot of truth in there, and I would add to the argument that whether it be intentional or whether they're seizing the opportunity in some cases, regardless, what they're seeking is to control people in large numbers. And they're using access to food, access to water, access to energy, access to medical care or medical freedom. And you can pick anything that basically sustains, preserves, or protects life, and they're coming after that in some way globally. But what they're also finding out is that the harder you try to control people in large numbers, the more they're going to revolt. I mean, look at the lines of people right now trying to leave Russia, go into other countries like Georgia or other areas like Georgia, and after Putin made his proclamation to recruit mass numbers of uh, people into the military. And that's just the Russian way. We don't use tactics. We're just going to try to mow you down with masses. Well, the people are like, oh, we're not going to play with this. So they're they're leaving Russia in large quantities. Well, that's going to be true in many ways across the, across the world where agencies, governments, people, organizations, whatever they are, work in concert to try to control people in some ways. People are innovative especially when the survival is at stake, they're going to find ways to get out of that. No doubt about it. Um, 
Darren, we uh, we appreciate you being here on the broadcast. We've only got about 40 seconds left. And uh, as we continue to go forward, we know that you guys are on the tip of the spear and, you know, that, you know, uh, constitutionally speaking and, and uh, you know, really bringing things back to the way that they should be. And we do appreciate and applaud your efforts. How can people find out more about you um, before we go ahead and give out your websites or any way, anything you want to give folks? Yeah, it's uh, restore-liberty.org is the website. And the last thing we would say is uh, no matter what you hear or who you hear it from, get out there and vote. Vote in person and don't let anything or anybody dissuade you from doing that. We have to be out there. Well put, Darren Grubb. We appreciate you being here. We'll see you next Thursday, 11.04 a.m. Until next time, um, keep up the great fight, my friend. Thanks for being on today. Thanks, Ian. Pleasure to be here. Yep. Great to have you.